libraries code that you find distributed in the CMS. So if you're thinking that, um, you're kind of on the wrong path right now, but it, you will be able to pick something up that you can use in the CMS. Um, basically, uh, the slides part of this, it's gonna be a little overview about the history of the code base, um, what we're offering in the framework code base, what it means for you as a Joomla or PHP developer, and uh, some of the examples that we have in the wild and some stuff that uh, I'm actually working on with the framework. Um, so CMS versus framework, because uh, I've been asked this a couple of times doing this session. So the CMS is an out-of-the-box application, ready to go, all set up. You just add in the custom components that you need, do your styling, whatever the case may be. Whereas with the framework, you're building a complete application ground up and you're building it on a application framework. So some of the stuff is being taken care of for you at the framework level, but you have, you have to deal with a little bit more of the architecture in your platform. So a brief history about the framework code. Uh, the code base actually dates back to Joomla 1.0. This is not brand new code for the most part, although there has been some stuff that's been added to the framework that's relatively new. But it does chase history back with the entire Joomla project. In 2011, the first real effort to split out the underlying uh, platform code was started with the Joomla platform. And uh, that was basically a straight up uh, duplicate of the libraries folder in the CMS with a little bit of uh, tweaking and uh, a little bit new a little bit of new code coming in for those first few months but uh, it was still largely coupled to the CMS way of thinking the CMS way of developing so in 2013 we kind of shifted priorities a little bit and uh, we broke off completely that code from thinking about only supporting the CMS or even primarily supporting the CMS and uh, moving forward with it as a proper PHP framework. Some misconceptions that uh, commonly go around about the framework code. It's a new framework, which in some ways is true. It officially was started in, in January of 2013. So officially it's barely a year and a half old. But it's not new code. As I said a little bit ago, this is code that's been extracted from the CMS, been used in the CMS for years. So it's tried and tested. It's already powering 3% of the web. So you're getting a stable code base when you build uh, projects on the Joomla framework. Uh, another misconception, you have to do things the Joomla way. Uh, some of this earlier stuff I did with the platform and even when the framework first started, there was still a lot of designs that looked like a uh, Joomla CMS component or libraries and just things that were designed very specifically like I was building a CMS extension. So in some ways it's true that you do have to build things the Joomla way if you're using the framework. Um, we do, but we do it in a more accepted pattern using uh, top level abstract classes to define out certain methods that we expect you to um, implement. And we do it with interfaces so that you can completely put in your own custom classes, your own custom implementations, but still follow the top level design patterns of the framework. And it's like this across a, a lot of frameworks. It's not a unique Joomla thing. The goal here was interoperability. We wanted to make it easier so where you could work with other PHP projects in the open source world, not just if, if it's not written by Joomla, you have to write it yourself. So you can pull in code from Symfony, from Laravel, or from any other open source project and be able to implement it into Joomla. So what does the framework offer? It's a lightweight PHP application framework. You can build web applications, you can build command line applications on this framework code. Uh, and in framework, we try to take care a lot of, of a lot of uh, heavy lifting in the appropriate places for you. And we try to offer a bunch of uh, convenience code to help with common tasks or neat little features. But as a framework, we don't try to do everything. And we, we're trying to keep the framework uh, lightweight, 
uh, not tr not stack it up like uh, Symphony, for example. They we see a lot of code in some of their packages. We're trying not to uh, get heavy like that per se. Uh, we try to make the packages easy to use. Um, in Joomla land, documentation isn't exactly the best thing. Uh, it's still true with the framework, but we're getting better with it. Um, each framework package has a README with very, very basic um, introduction and how to use instructions. And uh, if you're already familiar with the Joomla code base, then being able to pick up on being able to use the framework should be relatively easy for you. Um, we support PSR 1, 3, and 4. Um, if you're not aware of what PSRs are, they're uh, kind of like interoperability guidelines um, from the uh, PHP FIG group, which is basically a lot of uh, leaders in the PHP community coming together and uh, trying to make frameworks, applications, whatever the case may be, easier to integrate with. Joomla is also represented in the PHP FIG group. So uh, PSR1 is a class name, uh, code style type standard, which uh, we're implementing. PSR3 is a logging interface to where um, you can use any type of logger, and in your code you only uh, type hint or declare against that interface, so where you could drop in any type of logging package that, imp that properly implements that interface. And uh, PSR4 is a uh, auto-loading standard, uh, kind of defines a little bit about your uh, file structure for in your project, and uh, all the Joomla packages either are supporting PSR4 right now or will be as we're uh, refactoring them. And uh, not the most popular topic in Joomla land, but license. Current version of the framework is GPL. Uh, version 2 of the framework will be LGPL. That's all I'm going to say on that. Framework code. We offer a bunch of API wrappers to a bunch of third-party libraries. Um, one of our best ones, in my opinion, as a developer, is the GitHub wrapper. And not just because I work with GitHub a lot or I think it's good code, but because it's one of the first packages in PHP land that was a full implementation of GitHub's version 3 API. So it's very easy to integrate with their API without having to write your own interfaces or find a SDK somewhere or what other, other hassles that come out. And it's the same with uh, these other packages that we support with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. It's all written in a very similar code style, so you can very easily use these packages and use them very similarly, and um, you don't have to try to work out how to set up the API connectors or implement SDKs or get out to code that you're not familiar with. And these packages are all already in the Joomla CMS, so you could use them today in projects. Um, so this is, this is an, an example of a application class that's implementing uh, Joomla framework code. This is actually the uh, application class for framework.joomla.org. And uh, what you see here is there's not a lot of code in the application class. This main method, all we're doing is defining our routes uh, and uh, instantiating our router and instantiating our controller and executing the application. And we're able to do that because the top level framework code is handling a lot of the heavy lifting for a web application. So you don't have to worry about sending your PHP or sending your response headers, or doing a output compression if you want to do that in your application. It's all being done at the framework level if you set the right configuration options. Uh, this slide never translates well, but uh, it's basically uh, the code stack between a, a web application and a command line application. Uh, the top two blocks on these slides are the, the PSR3 logger, uh, a logger aware interface, which basically defines that our, our base application class, it, it, you can inject a PSR3 supported logger, and we already have the base code in place to, to use that logger in our application. And then the first blob right after that interface is the top level um, application class. Uh, a lot of the stuff in here really deals with the setting up of your application, uh, loading up your configuration, and uh, retrieving configuration values. 
and then um, the two the two objects diverge like right here. Uh, this side's the web application, and this side's the command line application. And uh, like I was talking about with the web, with the web application doing a lot of the heavy lifting already, you'll see with the number of methods that are in the web application class because it's such a huge blob, we're taking care of so much already. Uh, like I said, we're sending headers, uh, setting up app, uh, session objects. You can check uh, for secure connections, uh, form tokens, caching, send your response, all without having to write your own code. You just have to implement that web application class. Um, on the command line side, uh, there's not as much that you have to do command line. So we just have uh, wrappers around being able to send output to the command line or retrieve out or in user input when you're running your scripts. Um, this little blob right here that's coming off of both application sides is our uh, dependency injection container. Um, all the applications that I write, I use the our dependency injection for that. So this just says that our, my application is aware that it, of the dependency container and has these methods available to it. And then at the very bottom of both sides of the grids are my custom application classes. Um, these are the application classes, web and command line for framework.jumo.org. And you see in here, I've got four methods total in my web application and three in my uh, command line. Do execute we have to have uh, as it's a uh, abstract uh, method in the top level application class and that's where you put a lot of your uh, custom uh, application logic. Uh, it's called from within the parent, the main execute method and um, we, we, try, we advise not to extend the execute method unless you need to get a little bit more control over uh, different parts of the application stack. Because, for example, with um, the web application, if you override the um, execute method, then all that stuff that's taking care of compressing output, sending headers, rendering your output, all that stuff's already gone. So we recommend to use do execute. Um, so what's it mean for you as a Joomla developer to use the framework? There's a smaller learning curve because it's code that you've already been working with for however long you've been developing on Joomla. Just a little bit of differences, uh, mostly dealing with uh, name uh, class names because we did go through and namespace the classes instead of leaving them uh, global namespace prefix with J whatever. Uh, and there are a couple packages that did get refactored and uh, improved upon greatly. Uh, caching, uh, event package, I think the profiler got uh, a bunch of attention. Um, some familiar API. So if you've been using JFile right, that's still there. You just call, you have a use statement for Joomla file system file, and then you call file right, and it's the exact same code. It's useful for situations where the CMS doesn't quite cut your project requirements. Um, so out of the box, the CMS has a certain way of thinking. With, with what gets loaded where, your menu system is in a database table, sessions are in a database table, and there's all these checks during the application uh, routine for in the database if stuff exists, and part of it because the CMS has to be dynamic to allow users to easily extend it. So there's, there's a little bit of uh, overhead in the CMS also because of that. Um, so you can build off custom applications where you need a little bit more fine tuning over the uh, performance on your application, for example. Um, in the case of our custom issue tracker that we built on the framework, uh, we have less database queries on any of our pages than what you get out of the box with a brand new CMS install because of how we structured our ap application. Um, we set up things a little bit differently. There's actually pages on that issue tracker where there's no database connection established at all, and you cannot do that with the CMS. And there is a little bit of a higher development cost uh, if you're going to build on the framework versus the CMS, because you're going to end up building an entire application um, ground up on the framework, so you have to take a little bit more time to develop things. 
um, if you need session management in your application, you have to you have to implement that yourself instead of having an application that's already doing that for you. Same with uh, caching and uh, other things that the CMS does out of the box, but you won't necessarily find it out of the box on the framework side. So if if you're a PHP developer in general, having never touched Joomla, what's it mean for you? Stable code, uh, like, like I've said a few times. Now, this isn't brand new code. This is tried and tested code. We're not trying to throw new concepts out at the PHP community. We're, we're saying that the code that's been powering our application for years is stable enough to power other applications and we want you to use it. We, we make it easy to integrate our code into other projects. Uh, I've done a couple of builds now where I've been using Joomla code or custom code I've written, which is using Joomla code, into Symfony projects, and it's been relatively easy to do it just because of how our packages are designed and they're decoupled. Um, and it's everything's composer managed. We're not doing distributable installs of the framework packages. Um, just like pretty much the rest of the PHP world these days, um, we we have our packages listed on packages to where you can search us, find what you need, and you just add your dependencies to your composer.json file, and uh, you've got your code right there. So, let me grab a drink real quick. Some examples that are out in the wild right now. First one is the framework that Joomla.org site. Um, it's a very, very, very basic build, uh, mostly because I needed a place to show some of our uh, unit reporting statistics, and we didn't have uh, anywhere else to easily do this. Um, the rest of the site is basically static HTML for what it's worth. Um, so it's built using the framework's application package, the database package, dependency injection, uh, model view controller, and the router. The, the very basics that you would probably need to build a basic application. Um, PHP units integrated in here. Uh, on the command line, I have a uh, application that I can run that runs the unit tests for each package every time we do a release. And uh, if, if that package isn't already stored in our database uh, with its test results, it'll process that out. And uh, we, I use that data to compute differences in number of lines of code, lines of tested code, things like that on the framework site. And uh, for output rendering, we're using Twig for our templating. Um, just a personal preference on that. Now uh, the next project, our custom issue track. Um, and and there's, a, there's a lot more integrations into this project compared to the base framework site. Um, there's heavy integrations to third-party APIs from this site too. Uh, the data syncs with GitHub very consistently. We're listening to webhooks from a couple of our repositories so that data is getting injected into the site immediately and actions that are being taken on the site are posting over to GitHub immediately. So the two should be relatively in sync at all times. Um, we also broke uh, the way of thinking with managing translations. We're not using Joomla's core uh, language management system, but using uh, GNU get text and the, the PO uh, file format for language files. And we're managing our translations through TransFX and we're using the API to consistently sync up our language templates and pull down uh, community translations. Uh, the, uh, the issue tracker site is currently available in 14 languages, um, not all 100% translated, but it is a very international friendly site. Um, the, the page that's linked on here is a full list of all of the dependencies that the project has. Uh, just a highlight of some of them, obviously built on the framework. Uh, most of the code is framework based and then custom built for this project. Um, the external tools that we're pulling in, we're using Symfony for our session management. Um, we're using Twig for our templating. Uh, we have a uh, upload package that we pulled in to manage our uploads and uh, to help to interface that with GitHub's API. Um, 
that TransFX code is some custom code that I've written. Um, just, there's a lot of good resources in the PHP world that we've actually pulled in to help uh, make a better experience for the issue tracker. And not even just in the, on the PHP side of things. We start taking a, a design stuff into play, too. Uh, we have grunt support. We have Bower support for uh, front-end type uh, management. Um, another example, this was demonstrated back at Jab. Um, I, I've kind of watched the video a little bit, but I'm not too familiar with it, so can't say too much. Um, all these slides are on SlideShare already, by the way. So you can go there, you can check out the video from Jab, you can check out parts of slides. Um, but basically, it's they're using an application to um, help with energy management for a company that they were doing some work with. Uh, I, I thought the concept was actually pretty cool for a uh, framework build. Um, so getting started working with the framework. So if you're familiar with Symfony, you know they've got the Symfony standard edition to start developing your applications on. We don't quite have that just yet with the framework. Um, but there are, some, there are some examples floating around in the wild. Um, there's some projects being built on the framework on GitHub that you could get inspiration from, uh, copy ideas from. It's all licensed. And, and uh, just kind of uh, go from there. And um, a lot of the stuff that I've done actually has kind of used the CMS as a model because there actually is some good code in there to duplicate, but the structure doesn't quite match up. So to make things fit the way I needed to, kind of start with that code and then just kind of finagle things around until it fit what I needed. Um, so the, the link's on this slide. Uh, the first one was a, a, a demo application David Hurley started uh, last year. Um, right now it's in really rough shape. I probably wouldn't suggest it going forward, but um, it, it's it's a good way to kind of get a basic idea of starting up with the framework code, uh, kind of see some of the file differences, the structure differences, and uh, you kind of get a little bit of an idea of where to go with it. Uh, the next link on there is actually a old version of the code um, I built before deploying it to the framework site. So it's not quite caught up with uh, some of the things I'll show in the slides or in the code here in a little bit. If, uh, I got time, right? We have about 25 minutes left. Okay. I forgot what time the next session was up, and I don't have the timer on my screen, obviously. So, um, yeah. And then. The, the issue tracker one's the last one. And then that third one was a quick demo I built uh, for Joomla Day Boston, just kind of showing a uh, very, 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 very basic uh, framework application build. Um, if you're interested in contributing to the framework, uh, discussing the framework, using the framework, um, all the relevant links. We've got the GitHub organization where all of the code is stored at. Uh, we have a Google mailing list, um, we're on social media, and uh, of course Joomla's got its own stack exchange. You're welcome to ask questions there. Um, any questions so far without seeing any code? Um, questions about ideas, concepts, things like that? Okay. Um, let me... Going. So what I've got here is the code for the framework site. It's not posted on GitHub because I've got some sensitive data in the repository. Um, so if you're not familiar with um, file structure differences, the Joomla CMS, you put all of your files by default in your uh, web root, which is why we have that JEXEC or die check in um, all of our files to make sure you're not accessing stuff that you shouldn't be from your web access. The framework uh, applications that I develop, um, I try to leave only my web assets in a web accessible folder, in this case, www. So all these other folders that get deployed out to the server, they aren't web accessible, which is a huge security positive. Um, if you're concerned about having web accessible assets, well, this kind of answers that. 
Um, the vendor folder is by default where Composer drops in all of the uh, dependencies that you define in your composer.json file. Um, in terms of seeing that, this is actually a bad example because as the framework site, I pulled in all the packages to be able to get test data, things like that. And uh, like I said, there's a couple other uh, external packages in here for the uh, unit testing and uh, rendering. Um, Composer also has, Composer also does the auto loader. Uh, you just define in your uh, composer.json file your uh, namespaces and the, the folders they're mapped to from your project root and it, it takes care of that. Um, for, for myself, I try to put the executables for my command line files in a bin folder, kind of the same logic that you see in Linux type uh, environments. Um, and then I have my command line application code all in a separate uh, CLI folder. And uh, you know, it's just a basic um, application. I have support for a couple of uh, switches on the command prompt. So I check for those switches and if those are being thrown, I uh, execute different tasks based on the input. And then uh, I have a wrapper in here to catch any uh, output from running uh, system commands. And then uh, you have this source folder. Um, it's pretty common um, for applications these days. You'll see a source, a lib, uh, some type of top level folder like that where the developer will put all of their projects code at. So everything in source is the custom code that I've written for the, applica for the framework application site. And um, So you see I've got a couple of the Joomla framework um, parent classes or interfaces and traits for, to build the application class off of. And then I have some references to my custom applications classes. These are actually all in here just for uh, my exception handler. Um, I have support in here for uh, JSON output if I ever wanted to set up uh, RESTful API extract data from this site. Uh, there's a couple of views that I can do that with. Um, so I have uh, some switch. I have some logic in here for setting correct output type. Um, and uh, in my error handler, uh, the actual rendered output is set up based on that uh, format. Um, so something something I like to do is. Um, Oh, all right, so I've got this abstract HTML view class. It's my custom uh, HTML view that's using a rendering interface that I wrote. And um, it, it's a little bit more enhanced than Joomla, than the Joomla view package um, abstract HTML class in that um, it, lets you, it lets you dump in um, any of the supported renders that uh, my interface supports. And you can type it against that. So when you're deploying, when you're deploying uh, new applications, you're not having to rewrite your view classes based on if you're using Twig or uh, Symfony's PHP Engine renderer or Plates or any other renderer out there. You just type it against that one interface, and uh, you're done. And I find that to be a huge time saver. And then um, I've also got a couple of convenience methods in here for setting my layouts, setting my data objects, kind of kind of breaking responsibilities between codes. So, and um, since I'm doing this dependency injection, I don't have a factory um, class that I can reach out to and get stuff from. So I'm depending on data being injected or accessible through the model. And um, I do these default uh, view classes, which are basically empty classes, because I don't like having to, to implement new classes if I ever add a layout. So a couple of weeks ago, I added a uh, contribute page to the framework site here, because uh, we were missing our contributing markdown file on GitHub for all of our framework packages. So instead of duplicating that file 37 times, I just linked it all to one page. and. Uh, all I had to do was add in my template because of how I set up my routing. 
So in my router, I basically have two maps. One is a dynamic uh, view map, which, can, which pretty much catches everything. And then I have one for uh, my packages uh, to where I do my rendering for the different um, unit test results. So because, because I have this dynamic map for the view, it, it lets me, if all I need is a static HTML page basically, which is exactly what this contribute uh, page is, just ex and, it, and extends my uh, base template. So if I, if I need a new static HTML page, I just dump in uh, my layout file and I'm good to go. If I need to add any uh, custom logic, then I can start adding in my view classes, my controller, my models, whatever the case may be. So in the case of, of this route for status slash package, for, for example, uh, framework.joomla.org slash status slash application, that shows you all of the um, unit tests for each application package release. And it, it maps to this package controller. So the only thing that I really have in this package controller is I'm overriding my view, or my, de my default view in my base uh, controller, and I'm in instantiating my model and injecting in the state versus the model setting up its own state like you see in the CMS. Other than that, other than that all of, I'm using my base controller to take care of everything. Uh, just not, trying to not repeat code, something that you see a lot in the CMS. Um, the controller interface requires you to have an execute method. Uh, I kind of broke my execute method down into a bunch of sub methods once I started getting a lot of lines into it. Uh, and then I have a exception catcher, which I actually took out of the last project because it made no sense. And then uh, I just have everything broken down uh, into different methods representing different steps. Uh, initialize model, setting up my model object before I inject it into the uh, view. Uh, initialize renderer, um, I'm using uh, my site configuration to uh, figure out which rendering engine I'm using. And then uh, I'm going into my, and then I'm basically setting up my project's um, renderer uh, service into the dependency injection container. And then uh, initialize view is most of the business logic in my controllers. And it's just because it, it's uh, figuring, it's instantiating the views requirements, uh, setting up the class name based on format. It has a couple of fallback checks uh, just to make sure we actually have a valid class. And then uh, the different classes have uh, different requirements, so I have it broken down based on the format of the request. Uh, a JSON-based request, I just need the view class, whereas the HTML-based request, I need my renderer set up, and uh, I add in my lookup paths for my uh, template layouts into uh, the rendering object. Um, I have a empty default model class this lets me so this is part of what lets me um, do all these uh, empty classes and only need certain files to add new views um, the Joomla the Joomla view package a view is required to have a model injected in so this is kind of how I do that if I don't have an existing model, I just inject that default one into it. And then, so on the views that I have support for multiple formats, uh, I have HTML and a JSON view. And uh, you see, they're both basically doing the same thing. Um, th they're both fetching whatever data I need for the view from the model. The only difference is one is, since this one's the JSON view, it's just echoing out the uh, JSON object, basically. Whereas the other one, it's feeding into the parent HTML class to render the HTML view. Um, 
I'm, like I said, I'm using Twig um, for rendering. Uh, it has support for uh, extension type of stuff. So I have a custom uh, Twig extension class in the application here to kind of inject some more stuff into Twig, make it available to do what I need to. And I have I use a dependency injection. So I have this uh, service namespace basically with all of my uh, dependency injection uh, code. Um, and what you find if you if you actually read this function through is that the logic in here is the same thing as uh, what you see in uh, JFactory for the database object. Uh, so this is creating the database object, reading the values out of my configuration object. So in my boot up, I set up the configuration dependency injection code first, and then I set up the database. Same kind of logic in Joomla. The configuration object set up first into JFactory, and then that first call to JFactory to get the database object, if it doesn't exist, it runs through the same block of code, pull data out of config, set up the options array, and get the database instance, and just returns it. Um, I don't do uh, PHP configuration files, like jconfig in the CMS. I, I prefer to do um, JSON-based stuff. I just find it a little bit cleaner to work with, easier to manage at an interface level. So my configuration provider it has its reading that uh, configuration file, doing some basic sanity checks to make sure that it will actually work and uh, not let the application fail because the configuration object screwed up. Um, so that's the framework site. The other one I want to kind of show off a little bit. Um, this one's not on GitHub yet either. Uh, it's based on code that's on GitHub. Um, this is uh, Cobalt CRM. It's something that uh, David's company is working on. So I'm doing a little bit of work on that too since I'm working with him. Um, and this is actually uh, working on cleaning up some of that code because of how it was architected at the time with the old platform mixing in some of the new framework stuff. And it, it's just a hot mess in the opinion of a coder. So I've got my base um, framework dependencies in here. And I'm also pulling in some third-party stuff to take care of error handling and rendering. So in, in the case of this application, again, I'm using Symfony for our session management in here. And I'm also using Symfony's uh, PHP engine um, to do my uh, output rendering. Um, I store all my templates in a separate top-level folder from my view classes. You know, in the CMS with your views, you have your TMPL or template folder, and you have your all your layouts in there. I, personal preference for me, I just like to keep all my templates separate, and it's kind of the same way I do my code, where the layouts don't have that same type of access to the API, like um, just separation of logic. Again, I have a vendor um, folder here. And uh, this application is actually written to be in all in the web root. But I've kind of borrowed some logic from Joomla to allow you, allow uh, developers who, who may download this and use it to move files around and stuff. Uh, so once this gets on GitHub, you kind of see some of that logic. Um, Again, I have that uh, enhanced abstract HTML view class. Uh, it's handling all my view stuff. So I, service provider for PHP Engine, I'm just setting up the file system loader, loading in the thing, loading in the actual renderer, and making it available into my view classes. And then, uh, uh, I've got Joomla's authentication package in here to handle my what will be the username uh, authentication. Um, it, it's actually really, really simple to, to use. It, it cleans up a lot of the code that you see in Joomla's uh, user plugin that handles authentication. Uh, it's a much cleaner API. And then, again, I've got that same type of thinking in uh, my top level um, controller. 
I always in, I always inject my model my model state into the model. I don't populate it from within the model. And uh, some of the stuff in this application, all the models need it. So I did a private method to ensure all that data always gets in there, and then that private method calls the uh, API accessible method to finish injecting it based on whatever data is um, set up by those child controllers. Um, again, separation of concerns. I've got my layout, I've got my view stuff all being taken care of, and then uh, I've got a check in here for AJAX support and my uh, dependency injection stuff. Um, I haven't really gotten too far with this yet. I just started uh, reworking this this week. But you see here I've got layouts for exception. That's actually my exception handler layout. I've got a layout in here for login. But you see I don't have a view class for it. The act, that actual layout doesn't depend on needing any data, so I don't need I don't need a model for that layout. I don't need a view for that layout. So again, I fall back on those default objects that I built to uh, help keep things as uh, clean and simple as possible. Um, the main thing I kind of wanted to highlight here was you can you can structure things differently in the file system. You don't always have to do things a very specific way and you can use different third-party code to achieve different um, things it, even different packages to achieve the same thing and two different projects I'm using two different rendering engines but I I've, I've got the same type of uh, class of view classes to handle that rendering interface to set up the data and uh, it, just kind of uh, build out whatever whatever's going to suit the application best. Um, in the case of this one, it has a lot more uh, dynamics, so it needed something that was a little bit more flexible out of the box, and PHP Engine kind of fit those requirements. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, well, since it's written as a CMS extension, it'll be a little easier because it's already using the Joomla API. But um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that the the components built using the uh, J whatever legacy uh, MVC classes, those don't exist in the framework. So a lot of that logic that you depend on in those classes that are inheriting from that legacy API, uh, you'll have to implement yourself. Um, so, so it comes back to that higher overhead I was talking about earlier. But you can do it. Uh, likewise, you can also take uh, concepts from the from the framework and implement it back into this into a CMS environment. Uh, let me switch this over real quick. So this is a project that I was doing for for work. Um, so this is the component entry point file, and instead of just calling J controller legacy get instance execute re redirect whatever the case may be, um, in here I'm actually uh, setting up my namespace mapping for my component. Uh, and then I'm kind of handling some of that logic that's taken care of in J controller legacy get instance to to figure out which controller I need and execute it. And then you start to you start to see kind of a same same type of thinking in my MVC classes in this component that I used in those framework built applications. So you're you're able to move them back and forth. It takes a little bit of work because not all of the framework interfaces or class names are mapped over pro appropriately yet. 
Uh, we're working on porting over some of the framework code into the CMS uh, where we can without breaking things to kind of help with this transition, make it possible for you to build for one and be able to use it pretty practically on the other. Um, and you know, this is this is just a, a concept that I had for managing uh, some of these tasks instead of building a component with all this uh, extra stuff. I, I chose to go with uh, the namespace stuff, handle a lot of the custom things myself, and I ended up with code that I could actually reuse in any other type of project because it's decoupled from the CMS environment, basically. Mm -hmm. Anything else?